We don't want that paint to get all messed up, do we? No, we don't. We want to protect a little bit of that. So we are going to build some rock sliders for the FJ80. Keep watching. It's going to be a lot of cutting, grinding, and welding going on. Welcome back into the Dirt Head Shed. This is another episode with the Onyx Off-Road Build Challenge Dumpster Fire Build. This is a Toyota Land Cruiser FJ80, FZJ80, Lexus LX450, whatever you want to call it. This is a really cool project that I've been working with uh, Dirt Lifestyle Nate on. So I did a roll cage in it recently and that turned out pretty cool. Nate did a bunch of paint and body work on it and got it looking this cool orange color. So my goal right now is to build rock sliders for it. Before we build the new rock sliders for the FJ80, I want to give you a couple examples of other ones that I've done. This is my Ford pickup, Mom Spaghetti, and it just has a rock slider that's a single inch and three quarter round tube. And then if you look underneath, it has kickers that go to the frame and then it also incorporates a mount for the roll cage to tie down to that uh, kicker. So that's one example. Another good example is over here on my Mazda. These are two tubes ste stepped off of the body a little bit with a couple of spreader bars in it. And then this one actually has a kick out at the back. So this is designed so that if you are up against a rock, it'll sort of help push the, bo the body off of it. As you can see here, rock sliders work, but they are definitely don't stop all the damage. These ones are actually made by Marlin Crawler as sort of a universal kit. And they're also welded with a bunch of stringers, kickers to the frame. And then my, uh, my back roll bar is tied into that. So these ones are pretty hardcore. And these ones on the Ford are pretty simple. So I think what we're going to do is build something that's sort of in between the two of these. I kind of like this design here, but I don't think it's necessary to do this bump out so much. So let's go. Time to get these rock sliders started. I have a pile of tubing here that Nate dropped off when he dropped off the Land Cruiser. And he was like, I want to use two inch for the main hoop or for the main bar on the rock sliders because I want it to kind of match what we had started with on the front bumper. So I've got some two inch 120 wall, mild steel. It's a, uh, call it HREW, hot rolled electric welded. This is sort of the inexpensive mild steel that you see everybody building stuff with. Um, the next step up would be DOM, drawn over mandrel mild steel tubing, and the ne next step up from that would be chromoly. So rather than drag this whole stick out, I think I'm just gonna go get a measurement real quick and I'll cut this piece a little bit long so that I have a little extra to work with, but I'm not trying to drag another 20 feet out into the shop. I ran over to the rig and got a quick measurement between the front and rear wheels. One piece, six feet tall. I'm gonna cut the second one and then we'll drag it out there and see how it looks on the vehicle. I've got some jack stands set up here to kind of help prop everything into place. And now we can kind of figure out how we want these to look. Kind of want the main tube like right there. Kind of under the rocker, but not so tight in there that it's like right up against the other pinch weld. It would also be nice to be able to like leave a little bit of access so that we could get to the bottom of these um, 
these front fender bolts if we have to, because there's a possibility that at some point in time the front fender would have to come off. I'd hate to like put this all the way in there and weld it up and then not be able to get to that hardware. So let's call this the spot that this is going to live. I like it. Now we can figure out kind of how far off we want this other tube to sit. On these outer tubes, I'm going to use inch and three quarter, which is what I did the roll cage with. I wanted to give you a little quick info on how I'm going to figure out how to bend this outer hoop so it's in the right spot. Basically, I came down here, I marked the tube where it's going to kind of end up getting cut off and even with the fenders pretty close and then I came in from there basically about five inches so that mark to this mark puts us right about 56 inches I think that's a pretty good starting point to bend this tubing I'm going to mark the tube at 56 inches for my starter bend from center line and then we'll bend probably probably about a 60 degree bend on it I, would, I want it more than 45 not quite 90 um, just because I want it to kind of look cool and land in that tube like at an, an angle that looks good and a notch that's kind of easy to cope so we will I'll explain all that as we go but we'll come from the center of this tube out 28 and we'll put a mark and then we'll come over here and we'll go to 56 we'll put a mark and hopefully the tail on this it's only that long hopefully that's enough that we can put it in the bender and it won't like fall off of the die all right let's see if we can make this work The thing I'm looking for in here is making sure that the um, making sure that the tubing doesn't come off the end of this roller. There's a roller in there, and I want to make sure that tube doesn't drop off of it. So I'm hoping that I can get to about a 60 degree bend before that happens. If so, then we're good to go. All right, we're at 45 degrees there. And we're getting close to coming off the roller there. So I should be able to squeeze about 50, 55 out of it. And we'll have to call that good. I think I need to go turn my compressor on. There is 50. We can go a little more. We'll go 57 and a half. That's right on the edge of that roller. All right, cool, 57 and a half. Remember that so I don't forget it. Just got that out of the bender. Let's go and give it a quick test fit and see if we're even in the ballpark. The dog's out there barking at something. Oh boy. I think that might actually even be a little long. I'm going to want about two and three quarter or so of a spacer between here. And that'll give us the look that I'm, I'm going for. We're so. going to grab all this stuff and throw it on the bench and start building it out over there. I kind of know, I know pretty well what I'm going for as far as, um, as far as the slider goes, like overall length overall length and overall like how far out i want them to stick out so i think we can build these on the bench now that i have all those measurements after a little bit of back and forth i am bending the final piece this is the first piece that i bent and it was actually a little bit long for where it was going to land on the uh the other tubes so bending up the second one and this third one right here, this should be the final 
the final one. So, so let's get this thing all bent up. Uh, I'm going to 60 degrees on it now, and it should be good to go. Cool. This thing can go back to its home for now. I'm having a few growing pains on figuring out how to use this bender efficiently, but there's certain things there's certain things about it like it being mobile that are really awesome. My old bender didn't have a hydraulic ram on it. It was a manual bender. So you would have to bolt it down to the ground and it would, it wasn't mobile. So it was kind of like always in the way. I'm back. So the, the tube was gonna get cut right about here for the front fender and right about there for the rear. So I think this this tube itself is the right size. It's going to be tucked in there kind of tight. I think I had said I wanted two and three quarter on the spacing. Right there I could have two and three quarter. Over here I'm at like two and a quarter. So I'm thinking that maybe we split the difference and we do two and a half inch spacing between these two. And that should be a pretty good happy medium. That'll give us a slider that's like six and a half inches wide. So that like kicked up at a little bit of an angle. Should be a pretty good size slider, but not stick out super far like the ones on my Mazda are doing. All right, I'm gonna start fitting all this up. I'm getting it now. Got both of these tubes kind of shortened up in the chop saw, just cut it to where it's close but not too short and then I've got these um, just some random chunks of metal that I have around the shop and they equal up to two and a half inches so I'm going to use those sort of as my spacers so that when I start notching these tubes and bringing them in I can have it just come up and rest against that so let's grab the old grinder and start fitting these tubes. I'm not going to use a fancy notcher for these. We're just going to use, uh, we'll use a grinder, we'll use a chop saw, and we'll get these to creep on up into where they're supposed to go. The first step is going to be taking off a little bit of tube on the end here. We're going to take like a section out of that and kind of give it the old fish mouth. So get my Get it set here in the chop saw. All right, that should get us a little close. That got us kind of in the ballpark. So then we'll take it over here, throw it in the vise, and we are going to grind in order to notch these pretty much the rest of the way. test fit that. Make sure I don't blast my lens too bad. Get this one that's not started yet out of the way. Get this one. Knock all the grinding dust out of it. Ha! We're closing in on it. So this is the first round of figuring out how to notch it and just using the grinder. I'm really close on this. And then if you look here, you can see my block that I have in there for a two and a quarter, two and a half inch space, I'm only about a quarter inch, quarter inch away. So this one is also about the same and that's looking good. So I can just go ahead and 
continue hitting this with the sander, the flap disc, and we'll creep on up and make that look really good. The key is to not take off too much material. Sick, got those fitted up and looking good. Now it's time to figure out the little spreader bars that go between there. I think I'm going to use my actual tube notcher for that. This thing is really cool and it will help out tremendously. Oh my gosh, it's very heavy and stuck to things. All right. Heave. Here we go. Everything is very heavy. All right, let's get this tube notcher clamped to the table so I can show you how this thing is going to work. This is a notcher from Rogue Fab, same company that makes the, uh, the tubing bender I've got. And there's like, there's, there's a whole bunch of different tube notchers that are sort of the same style. I don't know. I had a Harbor Freight one for years and I'd use it every once in a while, but I didn't really use it all that much. So when Rogue Fab showed me this one, I was like, yeah, this thing's pretty cool. It's way nicer than my old one, so I'll give it a shot. I'm going to grab a uh, inch and three quarter hole saw and I'll be right back. Let's make this work. We will slide this in and we'll do an inch and three quarter cut on one end and then we'll flip it and we'll do an inch and three quarter cut on the other. And then we will push through and make our two inch cuts because we're notching from like inch and three quarter tube on one side to two inch on the other. Learning as it go. That was fun. We're trying to make four of these. So I'm going to go ahead and notch this one and then I'll grab another tube that's down there and I'll do the same. And then we'll switch the whole saw out for two inch. There we go. Cool. Let's test this thing out. See if it fits or not. So two inch side up against the two inch tube and boom that's awesome technology a little bit of light sanding and that thing is done so cool all right need to make four more three more three more i'm reeling it in i've got this all kind of clamped in place and sorted out so that I can weld it up. I've got a piece of eighth inch flat bar on the table in here so that it's like spacing this uh, inch and three quarter tube up so that it's at the same level as that two inch. That way everything's like centered all perfect. I've got my center line of the whole tube and then my, my little standoffs like scooted over 11 inch off of center for that. And we got fitment going on here, a couple of clamps holding everything together so it stays put. Let's weld this up and then I got to wrap it up for the night. Let's burn it in. Take all these clamps off. This thing should be a unit now.
getting it done. The welder's, welder's doing its job tonight. All right, I'm gonna finish welding this stuff up and we will get this. We'll get both of these welded up tonight and then I'll be back tomorrow night after work and we will cap the ends of these and start fitting them up to the Land Cruiser and see how it's gonna work out. Welcome back to the Dirt Head Shed. Check this out, this is a big deal. Um, I've been, I think we left off with finishing up these, welding up these rock sliders. And today after work, I came out here and I started messing with this plasma cutter system. Um, wired in this torch wire that comes over here to this arc droid plasma cutter. This thing hopefully is something that makes all this work that I do out here go a little bit faster. I have pretty much avoided technology most of my adult life and I'm hoping that I can figure out how to use this system and have it be fa fairly simple. So I just got off the phone with tech support at ArcDroid and they walked me through how to cut what I needed to cut. So, oops, let's hit stop on that. Watch this, we go back over here. I'm totally not tech savvy whatsoever. We have zero. And then we'll leave the torch off and we'll hit run. See if I can like, oh, that's gonna be good. Check this out. Let's let that run. All right, you guys ready for this? I am going to cut a rock slider end cap using computers. Look at that. That's insane. I've been avoiding this technology forever. And now it's sitting here in my shop and I'm cutting parts out with it. This thing, when I get the hang of it and understand how to program better, is going to be a total game changer. For now, I just cut four end caps for these rock sliders. So I'm going to cut the ends of these down and we'll cap those off real quick. That way I can at least call that part of this project done. Sick. So sick. Hot in here today. We made these caps an inch and seven eighths diameter so that they have like a nice little bevel on this, uh, a nice little bevel to weld to on this two inch tube. So I should be able to bust these caps on real quick and then we'll go test fit them on the truck. That's ugly. Let's see. These caps you typically sand the weld off so they look all nice and finished when it's done. I I'm definitely going to have to do that. Let's see how these fit. Cool. That's good. Just tucked in there far enough. This one will go back down a little bit. Oh, there we go. All right. This is one thing you always want to check. Before you get too far, you want to open your doors up and make sure you don't end up putting your rock sliders up so high that you have a problem with the doors opening. This one's not going to be a problem. They should do the job too. They stick out just enough to where they'll protect the bottoms of the doors and they're beefy enough that they should be able to take a real hit from a rock. Check it out. This thing's coming together. The sliders are 
the right size, the right shape. They fit where they're supposed to fit and they look cool. They should protect the body really good. Tomorrow night we'll get back in here in the shop and uh, start figuring out how to actually attach those to the chassis, stanchions or standoffs or whatever you want to call it. We're going to have a few little issues to deal with on the passenger side with exhaust uh, clearance. But all in all, I would say that was a win. I cut my first thing with a CNC plasma cutter tonight. That was amazing. I have finally stepped up to the early 2000s technology wise. All right, I'm going in to edit a video so that you guys have something to watch this Thursday or Friday. Welcome back to the dumpster fire. It's Friday and I have a lot to do on this rig. I've got to get these rock sliders finished up today, all welded in and the cage sort of tied into them. So we got a lot of work to do. This build series, it's sort of coming close to an end. Um, I've got to get my portion of this thing done like in the next day or two because Nate is coming by to pick this thing up and take it back over to his house. So I got to make up some ground. Uh, I think you will be able to see this rig probably at the Overland Expo Pacific Northwest um, in July, which is coming up pretty quick as well. So Nate's going to get it back to his house, finish up a few things. And it looks like um, Colt, and Matt have been working on their rig like crazy and getting a ton done. The little S10 is turning out rad. So keep following along and all the other competitors on this build challenge. Mischief Maker, Rudy's Adventure and Design, Bleepin' Colt, Bleepin' Jeep, and myself and Dirt, Dirt Lifestyle Nate. So keep following along in all these builds. I got to get busy. I'll show you how we get those rock sliders slammed in here. Here's a couple of pieces that I cut on the chop saw and notched already. I'm going to show you how these things are going in there. All right, we got the sliders kind of propped up into place and the frame is sort of where, well, the frame's not going anywhere. So that's what we're going to attach to. I've got a couple of tubes already cut. I've got one that I cut to kind of go over here towards the middle of the slider, or this will be the front, like, third or whatever of it. So there will be a tube that goes here. And then I've got one that I cut that's going to go here. So I basically just need to like figure out exactly where these two are going to go. And I will tack them. I am going to have to go in here and like radius out the rocker a little bit so that this can get up a little bit higher. If I didn't do that, then I would need to like put a bend in this tube and it's just going to be a little easier to to move the rocker pinch weld a little bit. So I'm going to kind of get my angle figured out, my location figured out, and I will tack probably this one in place first. This is where all the tricks come into play. How to make these things, ooh, how to make these things symmetrical and how to make it go easy and not fight it too bad. This first one is going to kind of determine how the rest of them all line up as well. I've just got a little magnet, a triangle magnet on here and that's kind of holding the tube perpendicular to the rock slider. So that it's all nice angles. I'm going to tack this in place and this angle that I'm tacking it is basically going to determine how much the angle of the rock slider is rotated up at the outside of the rig. four tacks on there and you can see that it's it's square to the uh, rock slider and then the angle that it's at is what's going to pitch this thing up. So I think next I need to go through here and I'll trim out this section of the pinch weld so I can get these rock sliders pushed up pretty high. Keep 
keep a little bit stronger than just cutting it out altogether. But you can see here it gave me enough space to where that tube will be able to weld to the side of that frame. Let's see. So this frame is totally flat as well as the slider. So if I just kind of mark where this tube needs to go and then I pull this thing back out, we should be able to set it on the ground and level everything out really easily. Right there is my spot. Coming down, 23. And it's square. And don't look at the welder. Oh my gosh, my ground's way over there. It's always... So the trick here is going to be duplicating this on the other side. I will go ahead and basically work on the bench to get the other side to match this one. And then we will come back to the vehicle and start attaching it. The other side is going to have exhaust work that's in the way. You'll see soon. That's a problem. And then I didn't want to get into this one yet because we have the roll cage tube to deal with. So we'll kind of fit that one on the vehicle. See if I can remember how to weld. I'm going to start laying these tubes out and I think the technique I'm going to go with on this is basically just setting this on a flat surface and then measuring up to the tube from the flat surface up to the bottom of that tube is five and five eighths of an inch. So if I get this one in its location and square now we need to drop that down a little more. We're looking for five and five eighths of an inch between the bottom of the tube and the workbench. Double check that measurement. This is the fully welded one that, here we go, that we tacked up on the vehicle to get this, the pieces in the right spot. This is the one that's supposed to be a mirror image of it. I think we did pretty good. Distances are the same from the ends of the tube. The angles are the same. The cut angles the same here because that section of frame is at a little different angle. I think we're good. <laughs> there is a ton of back and forth on this job and that's just how it goes. Especially working on the ground. It's, uh, kind of a lot of up and down. Next step though is going to be figuring out this where the cage comes through the floor. I went over and I grabbed some inch and a half tube because that will usually slide inside of inch and three quarter 120 wall nice. But this tube is just a little too smashed on this side. It's just not round anymore. So my solution is going to be cutting this at an angle and then we will make a new piece that butts up to it that's a little bit longer and that will allow me to have something to notch for this tube to cross into. So I'm going to cut this real quick. And cool. So if all goes well, this should slide in there now. Perfect. 
Now we have something that we can work with in order to get to the uh, rock slider. Check this out. We have the rock slider in place and those tubes that we put in earlier and welded, they are all looking good. And I've got it actually tacked to the frame. And now we are kind of working on this little section right here. This is that rolled cage tube that I cut at an angle and then I made this piece of inch and a half that slips into it that's now jammed in there because that's what they do. So this is going to kind of stay here until our final weld but right now what I need to do is figure out how long of a piece of tube I need to go from here to here and to notch that. And I think that's right where we need to be. It's crazy, it's actually just holding itself up in place. We're getting into the last little bit of tube work on the, uh, that very fir the front stanchion or the standoff. And I'm using this piece of tube that was left over from a messed up bend. This is gonna get reused and the little kick in it is actually gonna help get it down and around the rocker in the front and then it's gonna come up and sit at an angle up to the frame. So I need to do a little bit more complex notch on it. So I got the Ameribraid out and this is gonna help me get sort of an offset notch in this so that it does exactly what I want it to do. this thing on the track and see if this is the last of the tube work for this driver's side. I've got this side fitting up against the rock slider and then it goes up and it actually intersects sort of at the top of the frame over here. Okay. Look at that. Part of the reason I did this tube going that whole different direction is so that when this thing does hit a rock and that load is coming up here, it's not all in the same plane. You won't have all three of or four of these um, trying to break out of the same plane. This spreads that load out on the chassis different so that it will be quite a bit stronger. So I'm gonna weld that up. I'm gonna weld this one up. And then I think I'm gonna paint these at least the, the part that's going to be right up against the body and we'll get them put back on the rig. Tubing is always really hard to get full coverage of paint on so in order to try and do the best I can I'm going to paint them before they go on the rig. I'll primer it real quick and then I think we'll be using this truck bed coating same stuff that Nate used on the front bumper. Paint's not quite dry yet, but I've got to get these things done. Oh, look at that. Fresh out of the paint booth and looking good. Um, I'm going to get this welded in and let this side chill for a minute while I get the other side to match. Got it tacked to that roll cage and tacked to the frame. All right, now I got some room to weld this up.
I made up some gusset templates for each one of those tubes that I welded to the frame. Came over here, cut them out of some 3 16 flat bar. And I am gonna go get these puppies welded on there and call these rock sliders done. Cool. That's it. I got all the gussets welded up. I got the sliders all done. That's a wrap for the rock sliders on the old dumpster fire. If you want to keep watching more on this rig, go over to Dirt Lifestyle Nate's page. You can watch some of the stuff over there. You can watch some of it here. You can go to Onyx's YouTube page. You can go to onyxmaps.com and vote for Nate and I for this whole competition. If you think we're the right people for the job, I've got a few more things to do, but for tonight, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching this Dirt Head Shed.